there is one big difference between violent crime in general and black magic rituals. Now, what is the difference? Isn't it in both cases that you violate people or you take advantage of people? Yes. However, people that commit violent crime, they either just want to escalate to prove a point, yeah, reprobates often do that, or there's some advantage they want to preserve. Now, if you just commit violent crime, you have the authorities to arrest you, you go to prison, or if the courthouse doesn't get you, the victims or the survivors of the crime, because some victims die, but the survivors may come after you, or other people who disagree with you may take matters in their own hands and deal with you. So, people that just commit violent crime to preserve their interest or just to escalate because they want to prove a point, things backfire swiftly onto them. Now, with swiftly, I don't mean that immediately they face the full consequences of what they've done. But immediately, there will be a negative tension that will haunt them as long as they are alive. The only way out is to repent to the full, which many don't. Now, black magic rituals, or wizardry, uh, because wizardry is different than black magic, but okay, but wizardry is also used in this case. The difference is that those that do black magic rituals, they want to survive what they do to other people, and they want to be able to delay consequences. So if you plan to be around on the long term, without facing much consequences for your action, then you need to do it in a specific way to divert ne the negative outcomes away from you. So how do they do it? It's simple. You tell people what you're about to do to them. What psychology behind that? Okay, let me give an example. Let's say that um, you have, uh, you have uh, William. William is this guy from uh, Britain, and he is hanging out with his uh, fellow students at some fraternity. But let's say now that a lot of fraternity brothers, fraternity brothers, can't stand him because he's making progress in life. And let's say now they want to sabotage his future career. Now, if they just do that by sabotage his career, it will backfire. And they'll face uh, the consequences. It will come to haunt them. But, when, but let's say now, at some party, uh, they suddenly are drinking with them and they joke, Yo, man, wait till we set you up for a false rape accusation, man. This is going to be funny. And everyone laughs. And when we laugh, so think some people are just making dark, uh, making dark jokes or using dark humor. But this dark humor they were using, ah, just wait till we set you up for a false rape charge. That is what they intended to do. Now, by informing him what, they're, what they intend to do to him, now he's alert. If he brushes it off like, man, it's just a dark humor. First of all, even when you use quote-unquote dark humor, there are limits. Why are you suggesting that you as a group are going to set someone out for a false rape charge? What the heck is that? Let's say now the group does it during a, uh, a, a party. Then, two weeks, late, two weeks later, they say, man, it would be hard if people would just sabotage your growth, man, by setting you up. So first he said, wait till we set you up for a false rape charge. Then two weeks later, during some um, cookout, they begin to talk about being set up. What's going on? They are conditioning you to receive what they're doing to you. Because this is psychology. If you want someone to tolerate or to get along with what you're doing, you have to condition them. I mean, let's say now that you want to put, uh, let's, say, um, let's say you want to put a new mall over there. If you put a new mall over there, it's going to be quite busy, quite occupied. Let's say the people that need roots just want to be left alone. You just sending your construction workers uh, to build the mall is going to lead to resistance, it's going to lead to retaliation. But if you begin to make propaganda in a neighborhood about opening new shops, 
for example. Slowly but slowly, people get used to the idea that new shops are going to be opened. And then one day, they, they see construction works working, and there's a new mall. Now, because people have been conditioned with the idea that opening new shops will benefit the local economy, now people see a, a investment for them in it. So when they see the mall being built, they think, you know what, there's something in it for us. In fact, there's not much in it for them at all, but you let them think something in it for them, so you shape and massage their mind to be receptive of what you're about to do. Because if you just come out and do it, people will be shocked, thinking, hey, we never asked for this, it will be different. Well, in the same way, when it comes to black magic rituals and wizardry, when they're about to set you up or take advantage of you or do something bad to you, they shape you and massage you mentally to be the set of what they're about to do. So, while this goes on, you become tolerant to the idea of being set up. Even though you don't really think people are going to set you up, but you get comfortable with the idea because it has to be hinted to you over and over again. And then one day, uh, this William is arrested because some girl lie, uh, lied on him that he raped her. Now, the police does not believe the girl at all, or believe the young woman at all. But the police has to do the job, so they arrest Will, uh, William, and the police tell him, get your lawyer. William gets his lawyer. Long story short, it's all figured out that it was nothing uh, but a lie. The woman uh, withdrew a statement, and he was released. But look at this. The... Court case, as well as the rumors of him being a rapist, it became so much that the job offer he had was withdrawn because the company was afraid to hire him because of the backlash would lead to the reputation of the company. So, eventually, Will was able to get a job somewhere, but his career prospects were hindered. Now, 10 years later, William receives an email from an email address he doesn't know. And in that email, um, he sees pictures of the woman who 10 years ago accused him of rape, partying together with his former fraternity brothers that he used to be in a fraternity with. He thinks, huh, why am I receiving this? And it took William well to realize, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Two years before this woman came around and accused me of rape, in a fraternity, the word times were joking about me being set up, a woman falsely accused me of rape and all of that. Why, n n n why were they saying things like that? Two years later, it happened, and I should know when it happened, none of those fraternity brothers were around. It just abandoned me. And now, ten years later, someone sends me this. I know who it is. Hold on a minute. So, they set me up? Yes, they did. Now, they inform me what they want to do to you, just so that they can, can so that it would happen more easily. If you threaten someone, hey, I'm going to kill you if you do what I want, in that case, you put yourself as a perpetrator at risk. Because now you're in a negative state of mind. In a negative state of mind, you're harming yourself, even if you would be able to harm the other individual. Again, people who just do violent crime, they put themselves at risk too. But if you want to do things and survive and uh, be built out, you need to do it in a... In a practical, effective way. So instead of just threatening someone, I'm going to do this to you, or whatever, no. You inform them what you intend to do, and you let them get used to your intent, so that when the intent happens, the individual is kind of familiar with it, because the familiarity uh, lowers their um, their guard, and the familiarity lowers their resistance. Yes, when you're familiar with something, it lowers your resistance when it actually takes place. And why now do you inform Form them secretly afterwards what you did to them. Because here's the thing. If the victim survived, and the victim is suffering the consequences, at some point the victim is going to become uh, have grudges or whatever, and that will also cause psychic tension on the ones that uh, hurt him or set them up. Or, if the, or worse, if the individual repents, and begins to heal, that will cause an automatic backfire, a, a big backlash. So, you don't want an individual to develop deep rooted grudges against you because that will have a psychic effect on you. But you don't want them to be delivered either because once they are delivered, you're finished. 
So you want to keep them in a limbo. So after you commit the crime, after several years, you secretly inform them what you did to them. You don't have to say that like in their face because that would put you at risk too. But you just hint to them what, what you've done. And by doing that, you hint, you prevent them from developing deep-rooted resentment because now finally they got answers. But at the same time, you keep them trapped in the past, which prevents them from healing. And because they are, they're not healing now, they won't be a threat to you. Because if someone survives what you did to them and they heal, their healing will be an automatic backfire on you. It will haunt you. It doesn't matter how much black magic and how much uh, witchcraft you do, how many demonic packs you have, you can't escape the backlash when the negative investment backfires. So you don't want someone uh, to be delivered, but you also want them to go the other route. It's, it, it, it's developing this deep-seated grudge against you. You don't want it either. Why? Because both the deep-seated grudge as well as the deliverance of the individual has, has an effect on you. Either the individual, if the individual dies, then it's over. But if the individual survives, you need to make sure they stay in a limbo. So that's why they tell you what they're going to do to you, just to uh, lower your resistance to what they want to do to you. And then after it's done, after several years, they reveal to you what they did to you. That's the reason. And that's also the reason why governments and intelligence agencies tend to declassify their operations. Why do you think the CIA and the FBI, intelligence agencies, why do you think they declassify their documents and all the operations they've been doing? Here's why. Because if they don't, and you find out the hard way they've done, that alone is going to backfire on them a lot. So, to prevent you from finding out the hard way, because you finding out the hard way will get a lot of things exposed to. So that's why they themselves, after several years, reveal what they've done. Uh, that is a kind of apology that they give. And then they will, then, People will say, well, you've been informed what happened because your answers, now you need to move on with life. So now, they will use that to excuse what they've done to you, and they will use that to put the blame on you for not recovering. Now, of course, everyone that survives violence needs to look for healing and recovery. Absolutely. It's not your fault what happened to you or what's done to you, but it is on you to look for a way out and be better. That's true. However, those that do black magic rituals or wizardry, they don't want you to actually move on. But they also don't want you to remain stuck in bitterness against them. Because both will, will won't work well for them. So, they will seek to keep you in a limbo to, to by accusing you of saying it's your fault for not recovering, this and that, just so that they can delay the backlash on them. Now, this video has been off, uh, almost 15 minutes. I've taken my time to explain this to you. And look at this. When... People are hinting to you what they can do to you, you may not capture it. And by the way, just because they hinted to you doesn't mean it's your fault if you didn't pick it up. They shouldn't do it to you anyway. They're wrong. But they want to use it against you. For example, if someone, uh, in the example of William, um, the perpetrators may say, well, we informed you what to do to you. It's your fault for not picking it up and do something about it. Oh yeah, we're guilty for doing it, but it's still your fault for allowing us to do it. That's how those narcissists are. They want to put the blame on you. And if they inform you afterwards, they'll say, but hey, we were honest. We admit what we've done. Uh, so they, they will use that to kind of build themselves out of responsibility. Now, intelligence agencies as well as satanic networks do exactly the same thing. And unfortunately, the public is in on it too. For example, how many declassified documents are released by those intelligence agencies and governments? A lot. Do the public read into them to figure out how they've, they've been lied to, how they've been done, how their parents or grandparents have been done dirty? No, they just want to be left alone. But here's the thing: there is deception going on upon you today, like it did in the past. Now, what's what is going on today may not be obvious, but what was done in the past is obvious to you, and you can go through it and learn and recognize your patterns today because you use the same patterns, but you don't even do it, and by Refusing to face the reality of what happened, you now become a collaborator in what's going on today. 
So that's, so they also are grooming people when they declassify their operations. Because they know a lot of people out there just won't be left alone and they won't do their research to figure out what's going on around them. Let's say that there was a water poisoning that happened uh, in the 1990s. And a lot of people in the community where you live died, including many of your relatives. And now there, there, there are rumors out there that the government's in on it. And you say, man, that's a conspiracy theory. Leave me alone. But then they release a document of communication between the local governor and the mayor agreeing to do this crime. So they release it. So they release the proof of what they've done. And now you say, I don't look at it. Leave me alone. Now you refuse to process what happened. You don't care what the truth is. You just want to be left alone. So you're in on hiding the truth. You're in on enabling the perpetrators. So because you don't want to learn from the past, and you don't want to reflect on it and become better, now you end up enabling other crimes in the present. So am I saying we should, we should spend hours reading the classified documents? If it's, if God calls you to do that, you do that. I'm not, but for the general belief, I don't say we should do that, but we should have an open mind when it comes to reflecting on the past. I'm not saying looking into the past. I'm not telling you to, I'm not telling you to be focused and operate as if you're in the past, but we need to reflect on it. Because that's how black magic rituals and history works. You inform people what you want to do to them on a regular basis, then you do it. And then afterwards, if the individual survives, you reveal it just so that you can keep building yourself out. So, I'm not saying that it's a good thing that they can declassify the operations. Just do it with wrong intent. But nevertheless, we can turn it around and use information to edify us. And by the way, if you're from African ancestry or if you're, what I say, in the world black, you'll be shocked when you go to those declassified documents how afraid they were for you to emancipate and to become better off. You'll be shocked how much effort they made to keep this anti-black racism alive. You'll be shocked. But anyway, that's another topic for another video. Thanks for watching. Keep a in Christ. Be at peace. And I'll see you next time.